Oh yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks, Melinda. No, I've not read the script fully yet, but I've got a copy with me at my grandma's. I'll read the rest tonight. Oh yeah, the character fits my archetype yeah. perfectly, and I'm dead excited. No, no, I won't let you down this time. Yeah, bye-bye, bye, bye. Ooh. You all right, Grandma? Ross, I've made a big decision. What's that then, Grandma? Well, I've decided to sell my body to science. What now? No, when I'm dead, you daft ape of. <laughs> you know, I think I've got some good bits that they could use, and Dorian were telling me that they gave her 250 quid for Reggie's body. 250 quid? 250 quid. For Reg? For Reg. <laughs> Who bought him? Oh, the uh, universities. Oh, they, they use them to teach the young doctors. So I reckon, you know, I reckon I could be worth about £400. Oh, hang on. No. Oh, my bladder's on the blink. Silly if I don't tell them, they won't know, will they? Ah, oh, but poor Doreen. She didn't fancy him being pittled in vinegar. She don't press on her chips now, out of respect. So, how's the acting going? Oh, yeah, it's going great with this new agent. It was her that got me that role as a pimp, and I've just landed this part where I play this gangster who goes around with this pet monkey on his shoulder. Oh, I've got my first sex scene coming up in this new one as well. Oh, that's nice. So, uh, that'll be um, interesting. Don't tell me mum, though. Oh, no, my lips are sealed. <laughs> I mean, so much better than my last agent. I mean, the roles he was putting me for were not really me at all. Hey, don't you go doubting yourself, Russ. They obviously thought you were perfect for that role. That's why they gave it you. Yeah, but he wanted me to play a farmer who had a bit of a thing for one of his sheep. Well, th th there's plenty of that sort of shenanigans in Shakespeare. Plus, your dad's got a house next to a farm. No, that's just a field. Oh, yeah. I like a good Catherine Cookson novel. You want to read The Gambling Man. Oh, it's a beautiful book. It's got that uh, uh, Robson, uh, oh, uh, uh, Jerome fella in Robson, it. Robson, yeah. uh, Robson Green. Yeah, uh, Robson Green. Oh, do you know, he just looked like your granddad when he were young. You know, Russ, I begged him not to try and put them Christmas lights up on Guttering. Who wants to be writing out funeral invites on Boxing Day? It's 11 years this Christmas. And, do you know, I still miss him. <laughs> do you want a jelly baby, Grandma? Oh, I'll have two. Anyway, I've still got your dad and the twins and your Auntie Tracy. You know, and I do look forward to you and our punters coming and visiting me once a week. We won't miss it for the world, Grandma. <laughs> oh. Hi, Gran. Hi. Cousin, this is for you. Oh, thank you. It's beautiful. Uh, Russ has got a role in a Shakespeare play. Really? Oh. Well, that's a big step up from the online bingo ad. <laughs> no, Grandma's got the wrong end of the stick. Oh, that's a shame. I could see you as a Falstaff, or possibly a Iago. Wasn't Iago a parrot? Not enough Othello he wasn't. What's the role? Oh, I've just been reading it now. I play this Soho drug lord gangster who has an affair with his best friend's partner and then later shoots him. He's called <laughs> Big Joe Gibbon and he goes around with this pet monkey on his shoulder. Is the monkey a metaphor? Oh, I don't know. I've not read the whole thing yet. But I was just saying to Grandma how great this new agent is. Oh, Kevin across is watching snooker again. <laughs> how long have you been acting for? A uh, couple of years. And how many agents have you gone through? Seven. So, uh, how's Kirsty? Is she settling in? Yeah, Kelsey, who's doing great. She got a job yet? Yeah, she starts next week. How's Molly? Oh, she's good. I mean, obviously she misses me a bit with all the working away I'm doing at the moment. And she can get a bit arsy about it, but I suppose the time apart, you know, makes us appreciate the time together that we do have. That's nice. And if I'm working away for a weekend, she gets lonely. I just drop her off at my mum and dad's. She just hangs out with them. I've got a new photo, Molly Grandma. Ah, oh, she's lovely. <laughs> yeah, my mum says the light really catches her eyes in that one. Yeah, she's lovely as Molly. 
But I'm not really a cat person. Do you want a cup of tea, Pontus? Oh, I'd love one, thank you. Oh, it's, it's all right, I'll get it. No, 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 you've been working all day. Oh. I need to move my knees. I've had some of them eye buffering tablets. <laughs> Thanks, Graham. So, save anyone's life today, then? A couple. I'm doing a rotation on psychiatry, where it's more about listening to people talk about anything but their relationship with their mothers. Well, you know what they say. If it's not one thing, it's your mother. <laughs> Very good. Is she enjoying it, then? Yeah. I'd say it's very interesting, you know. You get the privilege of helping someone look deep at themselves and their fears and help get an insight I've into... I've often it. wondered what a psychiatrist would make of me. So have I. I think you should have some therapy. In fact, everyone could benefit from a little introspection. Yeah, but the problem with therapy is it's bloody expensive. 45 quid an hour, a mate of mine said. You're right. For a chance at understanding who you really are... It's just not worth it. Well, I think all that psychiatry stuff is bollocks. You choose to be depressed, which means you can choose to be happy. What a charmingly naive outlook. Well, give me one good reason why I'm wrong. You see? You can't do it. Well, it's difficult to form a counter-argument to a statement like that. You don't need any of that, you two. You're fine as you are. What you want to do instead of wasting your money on rubbish like that is put it in the bank. If you put £10 a week in the bank for a year, you better buy a nice new car. Well, I wouldn't. Uh, £10 a week in the bank? You'll be surprised how much you'd have at the end of the year. Well, I wouldn't, because I know what 10 times 52 is. It's 520 quid, and that's not enough to buy a nice new car. You could buy a nice new car, and you could get yourself a nice girlfriend. Take her to Scunthorpe, buy her some fish and chips. Scunthorpe? Scunthorpe's lovely. Oh, they've got a nice beach and a castle. Your granddad fell off a donkey there. He could have been trampled to death. I'll just check on dinner. I love her, but I don't know where she gets those ideas from. That said, she's amazing for her age. She's not daft. Oh, that reminds me. What do you know about IQ tests? A bit. It's supposedly a test aimed at quantifying a person's raw intelligence. But you don't think it does? Well, studies have shown there are lots of forms of intelligence. But geniuses have to have high IQs. Well, that depends on your definition of a genius. Those tests can often give misleading results. Well, that's where you're wrong, because I did one the other day online and I got every question right. Really? And what did it say your IQ was? Oh, I don't know. After I'd done it, it went on to this weird bit where you had to pay to get the result. I couldn't figure it out, so I just thought, sod this. But without the results, how do you know you got them all right? Because they're easy, Pontus. Honestly, I just instinctively knew the right answer to every single question. I'm not sure that's possible, without the actual statistical feedback. Well, I knew I failed my maths A-level before I got the result. And I was right there. And my first driving test. <laughs> Yeah, but it doesn't take a genius to work out that running over a lollipop lady will result in you failing your driving test. I didn't run her over. I just nudged her. A bit. She didn't even fall over. Plus, she was the wally. She didn't even have a lollipop up. Well, no, they tend not to. When they're standing on the pavement. <laughs> Very droll, Pontus. Very droll. Basically, only a genius like me is smart enough to know he's a genius. Have you heard of the Dunning-Kruger effect? No, I can't say that I have. Well, it describes a problem of how people with low intellect sadly lack the ability to recognise their own ineptitude and so, paradoxically, suffer from an illusionary sense of superiority. Oh, poor buggers. How did they do on the IQ test? Russ, as I've said, I wouldn't get to hung up on IQ. They can often give misleading results and they only show one form of intelligence. If that. Would well, you know what your IQ is? I do. What is it, then? It's not important. Well, why tell me you know it, then? Obviously, you want to tell me to try and make me think you're highly intelligent or something. Russ, I'm a doctor. People already know that I'm smart. It's not like acting. There are actually a few tests involved. Yeah, but if you think about it, you had to go through seven years of medical school to prove you're smart. I just did a 15-minute IQ test online. Dinner won't be long, lads. Ooh, Mum! Just popped in for those curlers! Oh, bloody hell. 
Here she is. Do you want a drink, Tracy? I'll get you a nice cup of tea. Oh, oh I've just got time for a glass of wine. Oh, I don't think I've got any wine, but I'll have a look. Oh, no, you'll sit down, Mum. I don't want you getting up at your age. Russ, get me a glass of white wine with ice, will you? And while you're there, get your auntie's curlers from the kitchen side. I'm doing her hair later. Oh, and there's half a bottle of yellowtail on the fridge door. Didn't finish last night. It's not like you, Tracy. So, how's life as a doctor going? Good. And how's Chelsea? Kelsey is good. Grandma! Where's the eyes? Pardon? I said, where's the eyes? We haven't got mice. But the ice, Mummy, wants the ice. Oh, what, what? It'll be in the freezer. Yeah, I know that, but I can't see it. So Russ got a girlfriend. Well, maybe nope. I haven't got any. Don't worry. I think he's I'm gay. Handsome. I know you do. Well, what if he is? We're all God's creatures. I know, but these days you feel left out if you haven't got a gay, a transvestite, or a bloody transsexual in the family. Are you working long hours at hospital, Pontus? Yeah, usually. Funny looking ice, this. It's all I could find. In the freezer? No, I found it in the bloody garage. Of course, the freezer. Was it stuck to the walls? It's cold. Just drink it. So it's knackering you out, this doctor stuff, is it? Yeah, it is. I'll tell you what would sort that NHS out getting rid of all the bloody foreigners. Did you hear about that woman from Africa who came over here to have triplets? And it cost the NHS a million quid. I did. I mean, me and Joel have paid into the NHS all his lives, even when we're living in Benidorm. Now, these foreigners, they come over here and get treated better than British folk do. It's not right. There's still people, Tracy. When I took Auntie Celia to hospital. Do you remember, Mum, when she thought she'd lost the guinea pig and she had that panic attack? We were there nearly three hours before the doctor saw us. And then when we came out, the parking cost us four quid. I think it's bloody disgusting charging for parking. Well, that's all you pay for. I mean, if you had a restaurant selling steak and they charged you four pounds to park outside, it'd soon be out of business. She's right there. Well, that analogy is a little off. I mean, if the NHS was a restaurant, the steak would be free. So even with the four pound parking, it would be full to the rafters every night with people queuing at the doors just to get in. Well, that sounds more like the NHS to me. Oh, they do work hard, them nurses, Tracy. Rubbish. When Mum were in the hospital having her hip replacement, the nurses spent more time on their arses than she did. And most of them were foreign. But to get rid of the lot of them. OK. Let's get rid of all the foreign medical staff treating all the foreign patients and have a nice, empty NHS. Too right. You know, under your plan, Tracy, you'd be kicking out Pontus as well. Don't talk such rubbish, Russ. It's not rubbish. He's a doctor and he's foreign. He was born in Norway. Yeah, but he's lived here since he was four and his mum's English. So what? He isn't. I don't mind who comes here, as long as they work hard and contribute to society. I completely agree. You're right, Mum, but most of these foreigners are lazy. They just come over here to rub our jobs and sit on benefits. Make up your mind, Tracy. Jobs or benefits. It can't be both. Benefits, that's what they're here for. Benefits, they just want a free lunch. Oh, dinner! Oh, do you want a pork chop, Tracy? No, I'm off to Janice's to do her hair. I'll be back. What are you up to? Oh, I'm just learning my lines for the film where I played Big Joe Gibbon. Should we go through a scene now? I've, I've brought extra scripts. Oh, do we have to? You've not even read it fully yet. Oh, come on, Pontus. This could be my big break. Plus, as an actor, it's better for me to read it as I see it. All the great actors do that. Pacino, Brando, Van Damme. A lot of it's to do with psychiatry. I mean, you should be great at it. Psychology. 
thought you said you were a psychiatrist. Oh, just give me the bloody script. Right, this script is just so good. I can't wait to get stuck in. We'll start at a scene where our killer rival called Gorgeous George on Hampstead Heath. Start there. OK, Joe. You know I ain't been no dirty boy. What are you doing? What? That accent. It's not that bad. He said they were in the East End, so I guess they'd be Cockneys. That is not part of the backstory. It's a bit off-putting. Just do it in your normal voice. <clears throat> Joe, you know I ain't been no dirty boy. You have to do it properly. What do you mean? You told me not to do an yes, accent. I mean, Russ is doing really well. Yes, he's got to rule as a farmer who's fallen in love with a parrot. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, they do say Shakespeare's daft, don't they? <laughs> yes, OK, love. All right, then. Yeah, I'll see you. Bye-bye. <laughs> that would be a great Aunt Celia. She thought a car had been stolen and it's in garage for repair. She still can't remember that she backed into that Skoda fellatio. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, what, what was that make again, Gran? A Skoda fellatio. Sexy. You should get one of those with your 520 quid, Russ. <laughs> We're just rehearsing for a film I'm in, Grandma. You'd be better than Pontus. He's rubbish. No, he's not. Actually, sod this. You can do it. Oh, don't be mardy, Pontus. No, I helped you when you were doing your medical studies. Remember that day you called me and dramatically proclaimed you could not go on and it was too much for one man to endure? Vaguely, yeah. And I cheered you up by taking you for that as much as you can eat Chinese buffet lunch. Yeah. See, you've got a touch of the dramatic about you. Yeah? Give it another go, Pontus. There's nothing to be afraid of. I'm not afraid. Hey, I, I read this great quote by Jim Morrison the other day. It was something about when you face your worst fears and you face the aftermath, you realise that your worst fear is what you wanted the most. And if you follow your worst fear, it'll set you free. Well, it's, it's something like that anyway. Oh, come on, Pontus. Give it another go. <laughs> Have you read this scene through to the end yet? No, not yet. Why? No reason. Come on, let's get to it. Uh, can I have a look at a script? We're on page 38. You can read the stage directions, Gran. Go on then, Grandma. Er, uh, ext. Jetty does the three men stand at the water's edge. You don't have to read it all. Oh, I actually know it'd be good. That way you can focus on your accent. Yeah, good thinking. Ext. Jet it dusk, the three men stand at the water's edge. A foreboding mist surrounds them. Joe, you know I ain't been no dirty boy. I trusted you, God, Jazz. I took you in. I loved you. Perhaps I'm getting soft in my old age, but my monkey knows a thief when he sees one. The monkey starts to scream. W wait a minute, who's got a monkey? No, no, it's my character. He has this pet monkey on his shoulder. Have you not got one? Funnily enough, no. Not at the moment, Grandma. But they'll give me one on the day. Oh, it would be better if you had one. Hang on. This belongs to Hattie and Livy. I'm sure they won't mind you borrowing it. I don't know. Toddlers can be quite territorial about this sort of thing, Gran. <laughs> Grandma, I, I don't need it. Come on, Russ. It's only us in the room. Don't be afraid. Yeah, sorry, Grandma. Thanks. I'll, <laughs> I'll keep it on. Oh, George begins to whimper as Joe and the monkey move ever closer. Joe, I ain't no thief. You took me in. You cared for me. I'd never do that to you. I've been stitched up. I know it was you, George. He was wearing your tie when I found him. Oh, what the bloody hell are you two doing? You look like you're about to smack each other. And what's with the monkey? It's a metaphor for drug addiction. We're just helping Russ rehearse for a film he's in. Interestingly enough, he's not read it through to the end yet. Pontus, I keep telling you, as an actor, that does not matter. Right, well, don't let me stop you. Actually, we'll just leave it, shall we? Look, love. 
You're going to struggle to do it in front of a film crew if you can't do it in front of us. Actually, yeah. Do your line again, Pontus, but this time, do it properly. I'll show you. Joe, I ain't no thief. You took me in. You cared for me. I'd never do that to you. I've been stitched up. My monkey only goes this mad when he sees a snitch or he thinks you've got a banana in your pocket. Joe moves ever closer to George and puts his gun to his head. Where's your gun? Don't need a gun. I, c I can use my air fingers. You'd look a right idiot doing it like that. Here, use this lighter. Right, we'll start again, everyone. No more interruptions this time. My monkey only goes this mad when he thinks you've got a banana in your pocket. Is that a banana in your pocket? Uh, do you want a banana, Rush? Because I've got one in the kitchen. No. Oh, OK, Duck. Um, Joe moves ever closer to George. I gave you everything. The world I placed in the palm of your hand. We could have had it all. Isn't that an Adele lyric? No, it bloody well isn't. Can we focus? Joe is now staring directly at George. His gun still placed firmly to the side of his head. Goodbye, gorgeous George. Joe passionately kisses George's <laughs> open mouth before Pardon? pulling the trigger. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Ooh, it says here you've got to kiss him, Russ. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. Oh, my God, this is terrible. <laughs> no, I thought you were both very good. <laughs> Bloody hell, there's more of this. And a sex scene at the end as well. Oh, no. Don't let your mum see that. Mind you, you've hidden it long enough. I can't believe it. What the hell am I going to do about this? Well, first things first, why not try being a bit less hysterical? You idiot! It's a bloody nightmare. Stop talking wet, Russ. No, it's not a problem, Russ. You're a great actor. You will pull it off. Yeah, Russ. We'll pull him off. Oh, very funny. Pontus, you're a psychiatrist. Can't you say something to make me feel less depressed? Well, apparently, according to someone, there's no such thing as depression, Russ. You can either choose to be happy or choose to be sad. What a load of crap. Who said that? Russ did. He also said your worst fear is often the thing you want the most. Another Russ Butler classic quote. That wasn't Russ Pontus. That was Jim Morrison. Hey, speaking of the doors, did I tell you I'm having my windows done next week? Oh, who's doing them? Alan. Alan Allen? No, Alan Bishop. Hey, he's been in hospital. He fell out of a window he was replacing. According to Doreen, he's cut his gut and split his spleen. Or is it other way around? Anyway, I'm off. Russ, don't worry about being in a gay show. Part you were born to play. OK, love, yeah, see ya. Yeah, I suppose i better go and do my pots. Oh, you sit down, Mum. Your grandsons can do that for you. Yeah, we'll do it. I'm just going to go outside first and get some fresh air. I need to give our Kelsey a call as well. What time do you want picking up? No, I'm just outside. Taking some very deep breaths. Well, Russ has landed a new part. In a gay porno. No, 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 by mistake. Well, at least I think it's a mistake. <laughs> this is not a gay porno. All right, bye, I love you. I've just Googled the actor I've got the sex scene with, and it's this guy. He's a big fellow. I think he's what they call a teddy bear in the community. He must be 30 stone. So? Why does that worry you? I'm sure they'll let you go on top. Look, why is this bothering you? You're neither gay nor homophobic. I know that. It just does. I'm gutted as well, because that script, I mean, it was just so bloody good, with, with great dialogue. It was dynamite, as you saw. Plus, if I was gay, I could do way better than him. Look, Russ, 
as much as I'm enjoying this, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. It comes down to a question of integrity. Be true to yourself and do what you feel is right. So you think I should just call her and tell her the truth? Why not? Not every actor can play every role. It's not that I can't. It's that I don't want to. You're a doctor. Why don't you write me a note or something? Saying what? Sorry, my patient has a medical condition, meaning he is physically unable to portray a homosexual man. No. Just say I've got a disease. <gasps> or a bad knee, so I can't bend over or something. Russ, I'd love to, but I can't. You mean you don't want to? Well, that's definitely part of it. Look, a note from a doctor is one thing. But I know from a psychiatrist is something else. No, you keep saying that, Pontus. Shit, I've got an email from my agent. She sent me the location for the rehearsal tomorrow. I, I don't know what to do. Russ, as I've said, think about your integrity and make the decision that puts you most at ease going forward. You don't have to talk a load of shit, Pontus. But you're right. I'm going to call her now and just, just tell her the truth. Do it. Brick on through to the other side. Hi, Mal. It's Russ. Butler. Sorry, Melinda. It's Mel. I mean, Russ. It's Russ. I'm just calling you about that part. What it is, I'm just not very good around monkeys. No, it was an incident when I was younger at the zoo. And it's just one of those common childhood fears that you get growing up. You know, like fear of carrots or clowns or dentists or... Norwegian cheese. Anyway, I'll do any type of performance that doesn't involve monkeys. No, it, it's, it's, it's an illness. It's called uh, primate terror syndrome disorder. Yeah, yeah. PTSD, yeah, 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 I'm glad you've heard of it. And what it is, I don't want to have like an episode or, or a seizure on set that, that'd show you in a bad light. Yeah. Yeah. I know I've let you down. I know. Sorry. Yeah. Bye. Bye bye. Good thing I'm a great actor, otherwise I'd have never got away with that. Primate terror syndrome disorder. I think maybe I should write you a doctor's note. <laughs> right, I should go. I've got to pick Kelsey from the pole class. Bye, Gran. Bye, love. Give him a love. I'll do. Love you. Love you too. Bye, Russ. Yeah, bye. Pontus, thanks. Anytime. Why is Kirsty learning Polish?